That's right. Hello, pretty cats, pretty What's friends, up? pretty whatever. Whatever. This is, yeah, it's always whatever. Whatever, bro. This is Bagpipes to Banjos. Today, uh, I have DJ Dave of Music Mills Entertainment. Um, really excited to have Dave here. I'm excited to be um, here, bro. Uh, like really just super excited. Another, a, a big reason I'm super excited. One, I think you're an awesome guy. Well, thank you. I just, I do. Thank you. <laughs> As are you. But a, a, a big reason for me and for the show, if you will, is uh, that you're a DJ. You're not, everyone I've had is a guitarist, a songwriter, right. uh, plays piano, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. but I'm here to prove, you're here to prove, not in a chip on our shoulder way, uh, that like, you're in the biz too, man. It's hard fucking work, and it's, it's really and hard it's, fucking it's, work, it's, man. It's, it's, you're an artist, and uh, really it's, hard it's, work. It's it's really cool to uh, again just have you on and ask questions about that. I think people that are fans of the show that have committed to listening, all of them, will be interested in this one. Well, let's um, hope so because of that and that alone, and then they'll realize that you're again pretty dope, and it well, turns out to be. A fun, fun listen. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the first thing I always ask, uh, I know we're local, so talk local, but absolutely, I do we're have neighbors. global reach. Um, but first thing I always ask is, where can I find you? Where can I see you? Where's your social media? Like, how do how can I know or book or do whatever I got to do with, with Dave Mills? Uh, well, the easiest thing to do is to go to my Facebook page which is Music Mills Entertainment, just like my last name, M-I-L-L-S, Music Mills Entertainment. Uh, slash. Yeah, I'm not sure how all that I, works. Dude, I think but, we can fix that for us. Yeah, for you, but, but, uh, but search yeah, Facebook you just for Music Mills. Search Music Mills Entertainment, exactly. Um, you can, uh, I'm at Jay's every Wednesday uh, night, sometimes following Drag Queen Bingo, which is fantastic, by the way. <laughs> Um, yeah, why wouldn't it be? Ab absolutely, it fantastic. fantastic, right? Uh, I will be at Jay's Halloween night, I will be at Tortuga Jack's on Jekyll Island the 30th. That's some big time, that's some big city shit there, Dave. Big city, oh. big city, that's some kind snobby. Of. What are you gonna be playing up there? Like, this is a night. Such a, what are you playing up in St. Simon's? They don't have a party up there. Uh, Thriller, bro, by Michael <laughs> Jackson. You know, it's almost Halloween. That's that's absolutely correct. Yes. See, what you're saying is for the next couple weeks, you're busy. You're at Jay's every Wednesday. You're at Jay's on Halloween night. And you're at Tortuga Jack's in St. Simon's Island on the when, what day did you say? The him? 30th. So the 30th of this month. Yeah, it's on so Jekyll, Jekyll Island. Like a Friday night. Jekyll Island. Yeah, so Friday night. If you're in Jekyll Island, I think Glen County does listen. Some of you um, check out my man, Dave. Let's talk about, you know, again, you're staying busy. I'm staying very uh, busy because I do wedding receptions, things like that. Also, Matt, I'll do anything. All right, so just to kind of stay on the theme of the show before I, I want to get into that. The grind um, doesn't stop. But let's start with and then we'll kind of skip the rest of your life to Bart or half of your life. And then that'll be fine. But. Where did it all start music wise for you? Like, where were you just like, man, that's it. I, let's not say I want to do something as a career or anything, but like, I, I've got a passion for music and I want to follow it somehow. Like, where did it start? Who was the guy that was playing the music for you? Who was on honestly, the radio? Like, you know, give me that story. Honestly, when I was probably seven years old, okay. uh, I'm an old guy. So that was in like 1972. Oof, yeah. Like, you, see, most of my fans can't do math anyway, man. So he is 27. Okay. Yes. I'm Still, 27. No matter what your math comes. What your math concept of math is. I'm 27. Uh, probably when I was seven or eight years old, man, when all the other kids in the neighborhood were out playing army and stuff, I was inside playing a radio station. Uh, like DJ wise. Like, uh, I love this guy or like, just yeah. Like, or? like, like radio station, like, playing music and kind of mocking or not mocking, but uh, mimicking what they were doing on the radio. So like you, you kind of fell in love with that, uh, that like that aspect of it. Like the, 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 the DJ, the, the podcast host, if you will. Yes. I love you too. But like that kind of, <clears throat> these guys know music. They're playing my jam. Right. I'm digging what they're doing. And right. You were kind of, you kind of, 
So what song or song theories of songs? Please continue well, your story, man. Well, this sounds cool. Well, music's a weird thing for me. Uh, like a lot of people have those photo albums of their life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't have those photo albums of my life. I've got some loose photos here and there, you know, sure. things like that, like everybody does. But when a song hits and it, I mean, it's no particular song, man, really, when a song hits, it pops those, uh, those color pictures just right up in my head of my life, man, from the time I was little through elementary, middle, high school, um, you know, up until now. So you, um, I guess I kind of, man, this, I, I've got a cool question. I guess this is a cool part of podcasts is it, it, it is unedited and unfiltered, but like, right. I think what's coming to my head right now is, uh, and see if you agree is that, um, People, musicians and stuff, like they are all about their sound and they rightfully should be. Oh, of course. What they want of their course. audience to be, what they singing and what they writing, what they want to be. Uh, and and, and have, they've got to find that a specific audience. Right. Whereas yours is just more like, I mean, I'm here for the masses and I've got, you know, when, when you ask somebody, hey, what kind of music do you like? A stranger or something? Or a right. new guy at work? And right. Like all kinds. No, no, you, you fucking don't. don't. No, you, I promise you, you don't. But you're one of those guys that absolutely does. I absolutely do, man. Like you, it, it, there's a rare breed from from the probably the late '60s to early '70s Motown on up. I mean, just everything. Everything, whether it's country, whether it's Motown, whether it's you know, it's, I don't care a whole lot for the new rap. I play it, whatever. But, I mean, you know, but I mean, if it, but you'll you'll find you'll find one. You know what I mean? You look for one and you oh, find absolutely. one that you like and you know everybody likes. And absolutely. You do that, you do that the, kind of work. There's a there's a thing that we do. It's called reading the crowd. That's well, I'm a stand up comic um, right. uh, by uh, not trade, but I'm really trying hard. And uh, so, yeah, you've had to read that room. And you've got to read the room and know what thing. they're ready for. No, you know, a lot of times I'll key on one person. And I'll just kind of yeah. watch that one person the, with the energy and stuff with is the that energy what you're finding? Like, and, and then I'll kind of go from there. But, uh, from the time <laughs> I was seven years old, man, I'm, I mean, stand ups a lot like it, I guess. And, it's, uh, well, it sounds like it now that we're talking about it, Yeah. but it, at the same time, just it's, I'm a, I'm a big music fan right? and I, I really am. I'm a huge music guy. And anyone that knows me would, 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 would tell you that, but, and I think what I've always kind of, and this is weird, but what I've always kind of searched for is like, how do I really tell people I'm into all kinds of music without looking like a, a chump? Right. Who, I mean, cause we just, just roll down. No, you windows. don't like all kinds of music. Just roll down your windows and sing, bro. I mean, well, I tried that for a little while. It didn't <laughs> work out, man. Um, but it's fun, man. It's really fun. And, and it's fun to see from my point of view. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that, do believe they like all types and there is most people that do that say it you know what i'm trying to say right. here but it's fun to see you using that power for good uh and it's a cool interesting technique that you just mentioned and I, do you have any other techniques on like uh like if no one's energetic like uh, you if know. no one's energetic man you know sometimes you i'll playing? slip yeah, into yeah. that where do you go with yeah yeah sometimes i'll slip into that mode that, that of stuff that i like to play yeah yeah the stuff that I really like to play. Uh, I mean, that's a wide variety though. Um, but the stuff that I really love to play is uh, that, that early nineties dance music. Um, I know what I want and now I want it now. That, that I work. want yeah. to. Yeah. Cause that's I'm Mr. Good. Vane. Yes. Um, a a lot of what I like. That's the kind of shit you're playing. Yeah. When that, nothing's going well. Right. That, that's my man, dude. I like. Um, oh, Dave, that's some good shit. Like the Miami freestyle stuff. Uh, Stevie B. If anybody's ever heard of Stevie B. Um, this guy's not, but I'm. Dude, this is know, what's cool about it. It's, uh, it was copyright free. I play it for people right now. Right. Um, you know, it's basically the 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 after stuff from like Two Life Crew, but it's dancey and it's not dirty. So this is. <laughs> Well, two out crew was real dirty, but they were they were dancing. Yeah, right, so they were this, dancing. You just segued into a really cool uh, topic that I wanted to touch on. You started DJing, and when I say DJing, I mean like really like in eighth grade playing shit in, in eighth, eighth grade. grade. Yeah, nineteen seventy nine. Jesus, I was 
guess way off. Nineteen seventy nine. I was going to put him way younger, <laughs> but so yeah. So I mean, I don't want to take a lot of people's time with the the boring science of the thing, but at the same time, I do want to know like seriously about like that. The evolution of the technology. You're DJing oh, tw- 2020. 2020. And you started 40, 41 years ago. Yeah, let's pretty be much. Precise. That's Every, way you're, quicker, Mike. Everything's changed. Everything's changed. Everything Everything has changed, changed. As Everything's far changed. as music. Like, look, Zeppelin with a 2020 light show behind him. Right. Do you know what Basic. I mean? Oh, like, yeah. Could you imagine right. how empowered? Right. Like, we'd right. all be just permanently tripping, I think. Yeah. But... So tell me briefly, or you know, you can take all the time you want when I, when, about the evolution of this technology. When man. I when I started, it's a weird thing. I I started with a buddy of mine. His name's Jack Suber. Uh, still lives Shout in Jack. Still lives back home in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, we kind of grew up together. Uh, we actually started uh, shortly after Christmas one year when we both got stereos that were really the same. It was <laughs> back Christmas? in the day. Yes. When everything was like all in one, it had the eight track, the cassette, the turntable and the radio weighed 42 pounds. Right. Right. (laughs) So what we, what we figured out how to do was hook them up together. No shit. Use the software engineering for for that, that comparable of an idea nowadays. Use the volume knob to fade out, switch it over to auxiliary so he could start the song on the other one. Oh, so you could go straight in. Right. We weren't mixing and stuff. We were just kind of fading out, you know, like radio style. So we went to a little small private school and, uh, you know, we were doing like school dances and stuff. Um, I remember. Dude, I remember. Yeah. I remember when Pink Floyd, The Wall came out. Well, I was going to ask, what kind of shit are you playing? And I bought it. And I remember playing comfortably numb in eighth grade for a slow song at a school dance. Man. Then from there, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I met him in eighth grade. <laughs> and we've been together for six years. Yes. And comfortably numb is our song. Yes, it is. What the fuck? Yeah. Comfortably and, numb uh, as a relationship. <laughs> yeah. Comparison. Right. Right. And I'm then, just comfortably numb. I love him. He beats the shit him. out of me all the time. I, but I'm I still love him. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm numb. And I'm numb. Then went from there, man. So, I, I started hitting the pawn shops when I got old enough to drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started hitting the pawn shops down downtown. I mean, it's a fairly and large you're in Columbia. city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Started hitting the pawn shops, uh, finding, you know, a turntable here, an amp there. Um, but How I much had, are you paying back? Oh, I know you're saving your money, you're a kid, but how much? You oh, yeah. Oh, God. probably $50 for the turntable, <laughs> you know, uh, and it and it wasn't even like 7000 nowadays. Man. Well, I mean, it it wasn't even the type of turntable that you would <laughs> right. use later, but it's a start, right? Yeah. Uh, so a buddy of mine named Kevin Aarons. OK, shout out, Kevin. Yep. Um, played bass in a band. So. When I when I had a gig, man, like a, a school dance or no, this I is remember, great. This is going great. I remember at one of the Methodist churches, man. They wanted me to come play for their lock in, and I was in eighth or ninth grade. What a gig that would be that for a fucking a, fifteen year old, right? Man. Right. It was. Fucking I'm awesome. gonna fucking be all night playing yes, music. Yes. Oh, so, that's so dope. That's so cool. That's yes. so, what a gig that right. would be. So. My buddy Kevin would let me borrow his bass rig, his amp head, and he had a full range bass cabinet that was about five feet tall. Because that's all they made him back then. Right. <laughs> Either right. Any, the right. Had like 12 Only speakers the bands in it. have the one. Right. And it had that 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 red sparkly upholstery that. No, that, oh, man. Was, this is it what was, a cool story. It was awesome. And uh, so my grandfather would load me up in the car. We'd drive out to Kevin's house way out and way, way out, which is not now, but uh, we'd load that thing up in the back seat of the car. He'd drop me off and I hook everything up. Sanity. Then, uh, yeah. And just kind of did that through high school here and there. Then went to college, uh, Lander College in Greenwood, South Carolina. Were you working through college as a DJ? Uh, Yeah, a little bit here and there. Uh, There was a. It's tough to break. To go into a college town and break well, that, the, that I mean, this is a that these fucking really small town. Oh, okay. uh, oh well, that's the difference. The big bar Sorry. was in the Thunderbird Inn. 
Shots. We called it. We called it the T Bird, man. I don't even know if that was the real name. Thunderbirds the are going, whatever, man. But, Thunderbirds are going. Um, there was a guy that DJ'd there that uh, worked at one of the radio stations, which I had done on and off, also kind of through high like school. College some. radio? Uh, no, at, like the local station. But he was the DJ at the at the bar at the oh, club, okay. right? Got you. So he kind of you know fine fine tuned me a little more from where I was and. Uh, I think I was actually bar back in one night or I was supposed to. And I drive up and on the big sign out in front of the hotel, it said tonight, DJ junior mills. That's what the manager called me was junior. He's a big guy, man. And you're and, just uh, junior. He never took right. time to know your name. You're no, just a kid. junior. Right. I mean, I was, a, yeah. I was a freshman in. What's his last? Kyle. Look at his application at in his the file cabinet. Tell me his last name. This guy, man, we would get off work. We'd, we go to He's the from Columbia, house. South Carolina. I don't know if you picked up on, right. on that accent. It was spot on. We would go to the, the Huddle House. This dude would eat brains. I miss the Huddle House. Brains and eggs. What's brains? Like brains, bro. Like monkey brains Did or whatever. Bring them? Pork brains. Did he no, bring brains? no, they Huddle had them for him there oh. at the Huddle House. Brains and eggs. Uh, Did he do this? Was he like. Uh, he was just a big country dude, man. Eating I George Street. No, I mean yeah. on on the mic. oh, on you're the, talking the, the, about the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you can't hear yeah, it. That, that yeah, strip yeah, club, right. that strip club DJ. That's like, oh, I can. I'm gonna send you a ginger. I can do the strip club voice if you go want for it. Oh, go for it. I want to hear it right now. All right, guys, welcome to the stage, all the way <laughs> from Kingsland, Georgia, the center stage. It's Bambi. There you go. Uh, That's a perfect. <laughs> the only thing wrong with that, but seriously, honestly, is you're not super close to the mic. Like you're right. not. You're, you're the mic's not in your mouth. Right, kind of like because they do that voice. They do. 100%. They do. Oh, I got a suspected spam call. Awesome. It happens every time I'm doing a podcast. Maybe it's a booking. No, um, I'm kidding. So back uh, to you, man. Okay, so, so from there, get out of college. Or I moved whatever. back home. Whatever. Yeah, moved back home. I I played soccer, blew my ankles out, and ended up. Jesus. You know, oh, going seen, back oh, home. Oh, I've seen the effects of that. Yeah, you We may, you've we may seen be able to do that later. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, kind of kind of like messed around here and there a little bit and uh, ended up bar backing at, well, back home then, all the big bars were in like big hotels like Sheridan. I forgot we were tor- recording. We just like had a conversation without oh, yeah. anyone. Like yeah. I didn't pay attention to anyone. No. I was like, yeah. What right. bar? Thunderbird? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Right. Keep going. So uh, ended up getting a job at a place called Paulie's that a friend of mine who had been the manager of the skating rink when I was little, uh, he was the manager and I ended up getting a job bar backing. And one afternoon, like the happy hour DJ quit, dude, just walked out. And he looked at me and said, you can DJ, right? And I'm like, yeah. He said, go. And the club stuff just kind of went from there, man. So I'm going to ask you before we get into uh, uh, my local, my town, my hometown. Uh, let me ask, and this is an honest question, okay. uh, ignorant to the facts. How hard was it back then? Com- but not compared to now, because we're going to get into now. That's right. where we're going to go. But working like, to, to me as a as a as a 2020 year, I'm just right. like, how the fuck hard could it be to play a fucking tape? Yeah, it wasn't tapes, you, man. did you have did no you have tapes. like a ton of shit going on? Like, well, uh, you were right. vital. Sure. Oh, uh, oh, but yeah, absolutely. I'm still vinyl at a, heart. You're a 15 year old with. Like, oh, you're talking like about before all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Oh, but I mean, no, yeah, I mean, man, it, it was, it was you. You know, have you ever seen Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Nah, man. Whatever. Nah, bro. That's how I grew up. Exactly. The mall on Saturdays, the food court, hanging sure. out in the record stores. You know. Right. And uh, then you are an old guy. I am an old guy. <laughs> Then uh, I am Sam over here. You start off buying buying albums, yeah. And then the first actual twelve inch single, which is which is album size. Uh, I got a spam text. I think. Oh uh, uh, fucking! I yeah. told him to turn off his phone before he came. He's so unprofessional. I know. I'm right? Sorry, everybody. Right. Sorry about that. Uh, the first twelve inch single that I remember buying was Rapper's Delight. So yeah, you hit. Um, you just hit music at the right time dude right at the right time but for for your personality right. what we talked about earlier so you i'm carrying around zeppelin was dying or died well and right rapper's delights like hey yo right hey yo 
Fuck all these pretenders. Fuck them. We, we, we're here doing different shit. Right, because that was... Oh, that man. Was, what a cool I mean, time that was the alive. beginning of modern dance music, in my, my opinion. 100% agree with that. You know. 100% agree opinion. with that. Um, but I'm carrying around, you know, turntables, my buddy Kevin's bass amp, and it just crates of records, no man. No way. Oh, yeah. So you're in... I can't wait. There's so much I want to tie in, but we don't have fucking four hours, you know, but we'll co you'll come back. Yeah, I'll come back. Um, gosh, of course you will. He walked here. Will. He walked here, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we're neighbors, um, by the way. But so you, you're hauling all this stuff around. It's crazy. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm still hauling all this stuff around. You, well, we're going to get to that. Because, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about, like, I've got a couple of questions at the yeah. end, or towards the end about what's going on. With Absolutely. That. Um, but, so you're, for what I know, from my knowledge of yeah. you and knowing you, 1996, you're in St. Mary's, Georgia. 1992, I'm in St. Mary's, 1992, Georgia. I actually Mary's moved Georgia. here to DJ. To, so there you go. So that's now that's why so I moved I don't here. even ask a question. I want to know what's that's going on. That's why I moved that. here. I, 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 okay, please. so I was working in this club, went to this other club, back to this club, you know, back home. We kind of made the made the rounds. And... uh so I forget what I was doing, but um, I got like this Burger King, no doubt. Yeah, something like that. I've seen his resume. I got this gig at, <laughs> at, at this club that I had really started in in Columbia, where my buddy was the manager. Yeah. The DJ had gone on vacation, right? And they didn't have anybody to cover. So he called me. I know what I was doing. I was working at a place called the Athlete's Foot, which is like Foot Locker. I remember that shit. Yes. It died right around the time I turned like 18, 19, right. you know, but I remember that shit. So he called me and he said, Hey, I need somebody to fill in. Uh, and back, back then the live mix shows from the club on the radio stations were big. Yeah. We were, sure. we were live mixing from the I club. I remember listening to some, okay, some yeah. when, and I'm, I'm 34. Right. So I remember listening to some in high school. It was like, dude, these guys are doing this. Right. And I think the big bulls, oh, they're live in Jacksonville. Let's oh, listen. yeah. So, I mean, what I remember doing that. Right. I'm 34 years old. So. so I filled in for this yeah. dude, and he had gone back home to whatever, vacation. And, uh, you know, over the two weeks, I, you know, played at night. I did a couple of live mix shows from there on the radio station. Then I'm there like the last Friday night that I was going to be there. And this dude walks up to me and says, says, hey, what's your name? I told him, you know, shook his hand and uh, he gave me his card and it turned out he was the corporate entertainment director for the hotel company. Okay. And he said, uh, so he's just there that night. He, well, no, shit. he had been there for two weeks. Oh, so we've been watching a lot of shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cool, 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 cool. So um, he said, Hey, we've, you know, we've got an opening at a club within the company. You interested in it? And I'm like, yeah. Do you think he might've came for that? I don't know. I doubt it. Okay. Uh, so uh, he's like, I need you to be. I'm interested is where you're at. Yeah. yeah. He said, I need you to be in, uh, be in Asheville, North Carolina to audition a uh, certain date and time. Great town. Great. I'll be there. Oh, it's a great town. Great. I'll be there. Didn't know where I was auditioning for nothing. <laughs> uh, I played that night. Um, the, the guy walked up to me and said, it sounded good. Uh, let's no, meet. you had no pressure at all. You didn't feel, no, you didn't no. think. Like you, nah. you, I know that. So you work hard, you plan it out. Right. You do your thing. Right. Did you put any more pressure on the planning it out that week or that? Oh, I'm sure day? I did. I'm yeah. sure you did. But I'm you're sure telling me right now, like you didn't really feel too much. No. Oh yeah. Fuck it. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I had a job. Well, you're, I, yeah, I, yeah. Right. Right. That's I, all I guess what I'm asking. Yeah. I was selling Jordans or whatever the hell it was <laughs> at the time. <laughs> oh, and, oh uh, it's probably <laughs> like, um, Penny Hardaways or yeah, something. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, yeah. or not Stump Mitchell. Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, man. Got it. Uh, so I met him for breakfast the next morning. He said, uh oh, yeah, so, shit job. Yeah. He so said, you took a huge, you took a, not a huge small risk, but a small It, it was risk. a pretty big risk. Big risk, but like, so, but I mean, I'm saying, yeah. like, I'd get another job at another shoe store. Right. So this guy says, uh, you're but kid. I mean, that's not what I wanted to do. You were a kid. Yeah, of you know, course not. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, Jesus, you know, so, so, cool, dude. So, so this guy says, uh, you know, like your style, like what you played, like the way you're on the mic, this and that. Would you be interested in moving to Louisville, Kentucky? I said, absolutely. From Carolina. Do what? From Asheville. 
Well, from Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, so you had two. I'm so sorry. I lost you. Yeah. You had two guys come up to you. Well, no, it's the same same, same, same guy. guy, but their corporate office was in Asheville. And it, so you moved to Asheville? No, no, okay, no. Okay, okay, got no, it. No, I just All went right. up there to audition. All right. Okay, you auditioned yeah. in Asheville. Right. Got it, got it. And uh, I said, yeah, sure. I, You know, I, I got nothing holding me here. And uh, he said, well, what kind of money are you thinking about? And already had a number in my head. So you did? Because I would oh, yeah. not. So good for you. I gave him the number. He said, well, that's kind of low. How about this? Awesome. I don't even remember uh, what the number was. I think and, a lot of uh, musicians do that, don't they? Oh, yeah. They're like, they, Probably. Well, they go low because they Because we know. want the gig. But they want the, exactly. We want the gig, So good man. for that guy to be like, no, right. man, let, right. me, let me pay you a little bit more. Right. Well, that, that actually good. happened to me last week with somebody on the phone. Right. Doesn't um, it suck? Because like, oh, they horrible. have a budget and they're horrible. like, I, I know how important it is. I know how busy right. it is. Uh, so he's like, okay, great. Louisville, Kentucky. Right. Uh, you know, they paid for everything, put me up in a hotel uh, or the hotel. So it was a wedding? Was working in. Do what? Was it, what? What was, what kind of gig was this? No, this was a nightclub gig. Okay. Just one night. No, 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 no. Okay. To sorry. move. To oh, Louisville. they moved you to a They hotel. moved me to Louisville, Kentucky. To yeah. a hotel. Okay. Right. Got it. Got it. Man. I, I'm an idiot. So from part there, the, part um, of the show. yeah, that's all right. So <laughs> from there. Uh, they actually moved me to another one of their hotels in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, found Elvis's house. At how like how old are you around this point? How, around? Uh, you know, it wasn't too long, really, before I moved here, actually. Well, you were um, in your 20s? Yeah. It was a scary late, time in hindsight, late, right? Late 20s, yeah. You look back at like 28, even 28, right. 29, you're like, what the fuck was right. I doing, dude? And then so, I, I get it. I left Memphis, went back home to South Carolina. Okay. Um, and you know, I think I went back to work for the athlete's foot actually. And, um, just <laughs> fucking just, loser. just couldn't, just couldn't dig on it, man. It was, it was fucking bad. So, uh, right before Christmas of 91, I got a hold of a buddy of mine that had been the restaurant manager at the restaurant in a Sheraton in Columbia. Oh, yeah. That home. was that was the business back then. Right? Oh, absolutely. It really was. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the yeah. Conference rooms. And- yeah. Uh, but the big, huge club was in the, the Sheraton. Dude, there were, I mean, it was a 500 person club and there were people in line on Monday who never even got in. <laughs> um, so it was awesome, dude. They had a oh, bar set a up time, for the line. Dude, what a time. A bar was set up for the line, the whole thing. I fucking wish. So that's pretty awesome. That's smart thinking. Yeah. So he was actually living here. He was the food and beverage manager at the Charter House, which I can't even think of what is the, the Cumberland Island. Cumberland Inn, Island. Right across oh, I from think, I actually think they just changed the name of that too. Right across I from know Hardee's. Where you're right across from Hardee's. Yeah. The pub area. That yeah. hotel there that I've spent many a one night stands at. Yes. Check that shit out. For a fact. Uh, that, for like 48 bucks. That time I was with you. No. Yeah. Um, well, you paid that night, man. Well, I didn't, yeah. I just, I didn't yeah. Just... So you owe me one. You got it. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> It was a little bar called the Brass Rail, man. It was pretty much all they had here yeah, it's in 92. Uh, formerly known as the Island. Yes. Formerly known as, as something else. The Twisted Anchor. Well, yeah. Bottoms, bottoms up. up, Twisted Anchor. Yeah. yeah. Right. My listeners know about the Island. Right. I trust them on that. I so uh, oh, he's he like. you up, by the way. Facebook.com slash Music Mills. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Thanks, Whitney. Also, Whitney's one of my business partners, by the way. It's spelled M I L L S. Yes. So, Facebook.com slash Music Mills Entertainment. Awesome. One of my partners right there. She's Whitney. one of my partners, but don't tell her husband. Whitney and John. Um, love them to oh, death. Uh, John's one of my partners, but yes. don't tell his wife. Right. It's all good. Right. Um, so, you moved back. So, here. I moved here. Uh, uh, this dude said, look, if you want to. Shitty now, but the, right. the only hotel oh, yeah. club gig in town. This guy said, if you want to go, meet me at Dutch Square Mall, which was one of the big malls back, back home, the day after Christmas, 1991. I'll wait 15 minutes. If you're not there, I'm hauling ass. I was there, moved here, um, worked there. You moved here for a DJ gig. Yeah, dude. Moved to Fernandina for a couple of years. Ran Sandy Bottoms back in the day when it was a. Uh, so you just picked up gigs. Oh you yeah, you were just yeah, doing yeah. it. You're like so good at the island. Uh, and How did then you, get gigs? I mean, you work in our. Well, I, I mean, you and- then, dude, you know, like bar guys, you pretty much worked at one club. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I left there, 
went to Sandy Bottom. Oh, so you moved to Fernandina. Like you, but you were like traded almost, like a baseball almost, player. You were yeah. like, oh, almost. Or, or sold or bought. Right. Like, oh. And then I came back. No way. Uh, That's crazy. You were a hot commodity. We man. opened Fathoms, which is now where the sheriff's office substation oh, is. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Fathoms. Uh, I'll tell you now. That I drove there when I was like 11 to pick up my dad and my drunk uncles. That's fantastic. Because they were so hammered and my That's mom was awesome. hammered. <laughs> That's awesome. It's probably like 12 but, or 13. But you're Scottish, so. Yeah. Well, I wasn't drunk, obviously, but I was just like. My but dad, you could have been. My dad was just like, like, you want to try? My dad definitely didn't want that to happen. Right. My drunk uncle, who everybody has one. Yes. He knows my nieces. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're just like. Love them. Too. Come on. Just get in your mom's van and just you do it. You can try, bro. <laughs> there's no, there's one turn. I'm like, all right, one. I'll do it. That's I all it, it was. Isn't that crazy? Right. Dumbasses. So but we worked at Fathoms. Went, Fathoms, went back to the charter house. From there, um, went to Extremes, which is where Jay's is now. Now Jay's. Right. And you're what year now? Like 96, uh, 97, what, 98-ish? What, yeah. I left there in 98, probably. And... Um, left there and, and you're actually, playing shit like I know what I want and I want it now. Oh. I want you're playing that shit. Now. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's loud and proud at that point. And TLC and I mean all that oh, good stuff. Don't, man. Yeah, I'll take one thing. Don't go you chasing learn, waterfalls. If you can learn one thing about but from being on this podcast, learn yeah. that. Just learn that. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Don't. Man. Don't. Creep, creep. Right. Creep, creep, creep. Yeah. <laughs> because you're my red light special. Yeah. So, so anyway, so anyway, so anyway, um, yeah, you're at 98, 2000. I left there and every single one of my friends worked at Osprey Cove in food and beverage. Okay. So, um, fucked a few bitches from there. Yep. So, <laughs> I had, <laughs> so, yes. Keep going. so I had like a three year old daughter, dude. And I'm thinking, you know, I need insurance, stuff like that. So, right, right. So, that was my oldest daughter, not my youngest one. I uh, got two. One's but, twenty-six now. One's twenty. Uh, but so then, comes but the so decision, right? so went to work at Osprey Cove in food and beverage. Ended up bartending. Well, back when Bill Smith was the sheriff, yeah, I remember he, him? Yeah, he came in for lunch every single day, and uh, you know, well, you got to spend that money at clubhouse. Well, yeah, right. So I kind That's of base my time on this because. In March of 2000, I convinced him to hire me at the sheriff's office. To do what? Exactly? Well, I started in the jail. I yeah. was a jailer. Oh, okay. So you were a jailer? Yeah, went to the police academy, okay, went to patrol, and investigations. And now you have control. the best police job the ever. The best police job ever. And if you want to talk about it, please tell uh, me. I'm a school resource officer at two elementary schools. So, like, if I want to be a cop, like, I get it. Yeah. Like, I get it, but, like, that would be the coolest cop job in my It's like, like if I want right. to be in the military, I get it. I want to serve my country. But if they were like, hey, man, just go be a recruiter or something. I mean, right. Fuck yeah, dude. I can dude, sell, I can sell anything. I've got eleven <laughs> to 1,200 pre-K through fifth graders oh, a day. Oh, man. And uh, they love the shit out of you. Man. My boss, the sheriff, is... How is, cool does that fit in? Now you're just an entertainer. You're just well, that guy. It's, you know, go, it, going, it's... It, well, no. My boss, the sheriff, wants us to build those relationships. So Damn right, you should. So in that, you know, I I play dodgeball. I I read to second graders. I dance with kindergartners. I do all that stuff. But these kids know that I DJ. Oh yeah. So I don't I don't care what they call me at work as long as it's nice. I've got kindergartners. Yeah, don't call you a shithead. Well, but... right or fuckwad or whatever. But I've got. I have a wife that calls me. Um... Yeah. I've seen it. A lot of bad things. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I've got kindergartners that walk by and they're like, hey, five zero, hey, Popo. Oh, five and, uh, so, so mom and dad are like, nah, don't yeah, call that motherfucker, so, Mr. Dave. So now. You call him five zero. Right. So now they call me DJ Dave. So, say awesome. Up. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and I do some things at the schools here and there. Uh, so, so you take a break. I took a 20 year you break. You take a 20-year break. From 2000 until February music, of this year. Music changes every three, four years. It's like sheds right. its skin, right? Right. Um 
You took 20 years. 20 you took years. Five, six, gener- five, six, seven, eight generations yes. of music. Yes. Maybe 20 in, in, in someone else's mind. Right. Generations of music. Right. You also took <laughs> about a thousand generations in comparison of technology. The, uh, off. Uh, off. At least Tell me about that right there. How when I how you got adjusted now you got back to it and like what on yeah on the how difficult it could easy yeah go for it on the downside of me getting out of it um of course you know we were using turntables the techniques 1200 which is still the industry standard um but that album's done right right at that time was when the mixable cd players were coming out where you could scratch with CDs, dude. You could do everything oh, with CDs man, imagine how fun that I you am. could do with I remember with vinyl. 20 years ago. I yeah. moved to this country 20 right. years ago. Right. Just, so oh, when... That was like $7,000. Right. So when my youngest daughter was born in December of 99, um, I sold all my stuff. Uh, we bought a house. You know, yeah, you all do that, everything all that right. fun, fun stuff. You do so what you gotta do. right. So when, when I got out of it, I sold turntables. I sold the CDJs, which are the mixable CD players, mixers, all my vinyl, all my CDs. I didn't have anything left. Okay. So, you know, I, I would kind of look at the pioneer DJ website and drool here and there. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, sure. Sure. Wow. If ever kind of like looking at the Sears catalog. I'm on a diet. Christmas. I go to, I go, I'm on a diet and I've lost a lot of right. weight, but I'm still on a diet. It sucks. I go to McDonald's.com six times a day. I've downloaded every fast food app that I can. Yes, well, me so too. Keep going. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm kind of seeing where the technology is going, this and that. Well, I've got a, another friend from South Carolina. Uh, his name's Daniel Pruitt. That, Shout out, Daniel. That kind of worked the same clubs that I did here sure. and there back, back home. Well, we kind of reconnected because he was still really, really into it. Yeah. And he's in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina now. So I got a hold of Daniel. I'm like, hey, man, this is what I'm thinking of doing. Please give me a little guidance on the equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's totally so different. So what's the first thing you do, equipment or music? What's the first thing? Oh, I guess that what you're saying is equipment. But like, is For that- me, was equipment. Okay. Um, well, again, that's where you fucking shoot yourself in the foot. You right. Know what you're but, doing. If you, but if you know music, you can. You, again, you're all over you, the place anyway. So yeah, you're listening and, to kind of everything anyway. Well, right. right but yeah. you know the avenues to get the music you Do need. Do you think at all you were out of touch with music? Like, as uh, far a as. A little like, bit. A little bit. But, like, you're but, pretty confident going in first but, gig. Like, I know how to do this. When I got music out of it, wise. I despised country. Yeah. So, over over that 20 years, I. I kind of got an affinity mm-hmm. yeah. for other things, yeah. right. you know, to kind of make Good. me more well rounded. Because around here, you play a lot of country, even at Jay's or got wherever. You. We got you. Um, the but, wedding receptions that I do, uh, you know, the, a lot again, of country. A, yeah, of course. A lot of country. Uh, but so, so it was equipment for right. you. Right. And, um, and then, of course, Daniel, Daniel helped me out with a lot of music to catch me up with some regional type stuff, uh, what we call Carolina Beach. Well, he's music, been doing but, it consistently. Oh, he absolutely. He didn't take a 20-year break. No. So no, no, he, no, 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 no. Yeah. What a good no. tutor to have. Uh, right. Good just, short lean on, whatever right. you want to call it. Right. Uh, so um, we were talking about Whitney earlier, Whitney Dewar. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, my buddy John. Um, Dewar. Dewar. <laughs> kind of uh, the 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 marketing genius of John Dewar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, well, look, me. if he didn't have a marketing genius. Oh, he is, bro. I'm telling you. Oh, well, yeah. And <laughs> Whitney, <laughs> with, Whitney, with all the Facebook movies she can make. And they're good people. That didn't come and, out uh, right. <laughs> I hope they listen later anyway. Yeah. Um, um, but they're good well, people. anyway, John John believed in me. So believed then you hook up with someone. John and Whitney. Hook up. Yeah. Uh, okay. You included Whitney here? I yeah. Didn't, um, yeah. Like a, like a three. Yeah. Or. Oh. <laughs> I was implying it. I, I want you to know that. But, you know, at a bar where you at, at and you're Pauly's, just like, came hey, in, I'm, I'm, this is what I want to do. At the Tiki Bar, I used Pauly's. to do it. I'm getting bored. Not bored with your job, but. Yeah. It, I want to I want to do something. Well, I've got a passion. And you start talking and, to these guys right. at a bar. Yeah. John and, John just, and Whitney. John John saw my passion for it. John said, you know, do me I think a, that's what he's really good at. Do me. Is oh, yeah. People yes. Like that. Absolutely. And making things happen. Hey, he, yeah, well, of course he's good at that. But. He, you know, do me a quick business plan. Nothing major. And John's background. But he puts you to work. He doesn't just oh, believe right. in you. Put oh, me right. to work. John's background is in car audio. So I didn't have to explain a lot of the yeah, importance of the equipment, yeah, how things yeah. work, this and that. Um, 
so I did a quick business plan, gave it to John. Uh, we talked a couple more times and, you know, he finally said, let's do this. And literally, I could not have done this without John and Whitney. I walked in John Dewar's house, sat down. He pretty much tossed me his credit card and said, get what you want, get what you need. Don't get cheap shit because we're not going to upgrade it we're in not six gonna, months. We're not going to shortcut none of this. We're, right. We're not we're shortcutting it now. anything. So, we're, so that's what I'm doing um, at home is getting this and knowing if it takes off, then I've got to upgrade. Didn't right. It? And it's right. that is a big mountain to climb. Right. Especially if you're good enough to, to, to do it. I'm not. I'm a beginner. And I understand that. But you're but great you, at it. You, but you had the oh, fuck off. You had all this confidence, and that's what I'm saying. So you we won just, that how we equipment went, was how much studying did you do? We that equipment. Dude? We went balls out, dude, and we spent a lot of John's money. Um, sure, a lot of John's money. Uh, but we're to the point now that that the hey John, hi John, <laughs> I love you, John. Um, I mean, I'm at the point now where the business is actually buying things right. now. But awesome, you know. And John, I know I have to pay you back. Oh, shut um, up, John, you so, lone shark piece uh, of shit. Right. Get the fuck off my back. I'll pay you when I get it. 87% interest. But my that's sister's okay. in the hospital. Oh, 87%? Right. Yeah. That's all right, though. Uh, but no. But anyway. He buys you this awesome shit after a 20 year right. layoff. And uh, how intimidating was that? Um, okay. That. Here's, here's how intimidating it was. Okay. Now I have a thing called a DJ controller which is now my turntables, my CD player, my mixer, all in one. And it's about uh, it's about three and a half feet long, probably. And it weighs 8.6 pounds. And Stop explaining my penis and that, start right. explaining your CD controller, right. whatever the fuck it's called. And so now all of my records are not right. records anymore, bro. They're, they're, on, they're on a 10 terabyte hard drive. I've got like 70,000 songs. Well, fuck needs 10 terabytes except the government. Well, you know, I do some undercover stuff, but uh, <laughs> yeah, evidently. I, but allegedly, I mean, allegedly. On a weekly basis, man, I'm I'm buying music constantly, constantly, constantly to keep up. And so from remix services when you this do and that. buy it and you do have these licenses and I'm sure you guys have and all that. Like that's where we don't can, actually have to have licenses, but you've got to buy the license. The, the venue does, but you've right. got to buy the song to play it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Which, which is why mine are all copyright free. Right. So I was like, um, so, so that's something get, that probably wasn't really super around back then. Uh, well, well the internet wasn't. So it right. takes someone to no, be like, no, no, no. I don't like Dave. You had to go. I'm going to take this all right. the way to. Right. EB40 or whatever the fuck band name was. What am I UB40. Up? UB40. Red. Oh, red wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> they covered Ellis, awesome. remember? Um, they oh, covered, yeah, they did. I can't hear. Oh, they never finished yeah. their, their words. You know, I can't right. hear. Fly, eh, uh, we, he. You know, the Pet Shop Boys. The pet uh, shop I like boys, the Pet Shop Well, they covered Elvis, too. Suspicious Minds. Good song. Good song. I like that. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the te the the technology has changed it's so, so much that I've got a ten terabyte hard drive. I've got a MacBook Pro, and I've got this controller. Okay. So that's an instrument all in itself to work. Absolutely. Just hold your thought, really, okay. really honestly, genuinely. Okay. Hold your thought. That's the whole kind of thing about having a DJ on the show. Is that you and you and you and you do not know how to hook that up. And you don't know how to make it work correctly. This guy does, and he does it perfectly live. Thank you. No, and I mean that. Thank like you. I mean it. About our, it's a fucking instrument. It is. It's twenty twenty. It really people. is. It really uh, hey, is. in nineteen, what was it? Eighteen. I don't 1874 fucking know. Eighteen seventy four. No, Robert Johnson sold his soul. Yeah, he played right. a fucking four string guitar. Right. I get it. I believe it. But this is a whole different instrument, and that was a point to have a DJ on right. the show is. It's not fucking easy, man. It's a, um, So go ahead. It's back a, to, did you hold your thought? Yes. Yeah. Good. It's, go. a, it's a combination, man. It's a combination of turntables. I can scratch and with And then it. any given fuck about fuck up about technology as well. Excuse I can. Me. And it's. The internet's out. Right. Well, then I'm fucked. Right. Please go. Then I, it's, I'm then it's almost like. That shit. Then it's almost like a drum machine. I can loop. <laughs> I can. I, I, a can there. I can do all kinds of things with it that, that you couldn't do with vinyl. Um, you know, I can. 
I don't know. I can just do all kinds of shit with it. But anyway, I've got this, this 10 terabyte hard drive. I've got this MacBook Pro and I've got this controller, right? I take it out of the box when it all gets shipped to John's house, put it all in my car and bring it to my house. I unpack it and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you like dick goes into your body a little bit. You know, you just like, hey, I don't need any instructions. I'm a fucking man with balls. I was. Oh, like, wait, I need every fucking specific instruction I could ever have. I was like, bro, I have no idea oh, what to do with morons. this. So the... It's really cool because the 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 manual for the quick start manual for the controller was 39 pages. The quick, <laughs> the, quick start. The, no, That's a get, Bible this. To me. get this. The quick start <laughs> manual for the software, 389 pages. I think that literally, I think the Bible, the standard Bible is 385. Yeah, to be fair. Probably. probably. For I think the same just, James is his 385. The, I'm like oh. just the software that I that that all the music goes into that sends it to the controller that that's I mean, the instructions it, for the software. Oh, 389. For fuck's yeah. Remember building a crib? Oh yeah. All those years ago before you took your break. I do. It was four pages. Yeah. I mean, it sucked. It was, Dude. it was stressful. You were having a baby, but. My daughter was four a, pages. Dude, my daughter's a junior at Georgia Southern. Four pages. She, she bought a dresser, <laughs> oh, and I had no. to put it together a couple of months ago. When oh, you look like a genius it. when you do it, though. Dude, no, it took like six hours. <laughs> yeah, put this dresser yeah, together so from Target. You know. However, uh, four pages right. to make sure that the most precious thing in your life is safe and sound. Right. Oh, absolutely. Three hundred and eighty-five yes. pages to, to make sure that I can. You can work this. That I can get little me, piece that hooks up. That I can get music. To another piece. Right, that I can get that music to another piece. from the hard drive to the laptop to the controller to the speakers. Yeah. I think that is a standard yes. hotel St. James. Bible is like 385. It's got to be somewhere close. Um, and it, you it, just—it's pretty oh, thick. Fuck. Um, was it in? Was it in Aramaic? Uh, <laughs> dude, it was all in English. Not our. Now that's a that's a dead language. Good for uh, good for. Yeah, of course, <laughs> Jesus it's is a dead. Dead language. Um, Chaim. Oh, oh, Chaim. Um, so Shalom. we're getting close to where I lose uh, listeners. May not want to see an hour and forty or it's pop. This is all you know. Yeah, don't pay attention to the lives. So what we're gonna do is kind of quick fire questions. Okay, go for it. To kind of end this, go for it. Um, and you feel free to talk as much as you want about them. Okay. So like, there's no quick fire. Like we need to end this, but you can talk as yeah. much as you want. Well, I can give you quick but fire answers. There's a couple probably. of quick fire questions, and that'd be great. But <laughs> I hate talking to you. No, but no, seriously. But I always I kind of improv them just based on our conversation. Um, the first one is always, would you like to come back and finish this? And Yes. Uh, what I do like okay. to do. That was a quick answer. Great. And I love that. I, what I do try to do um, to, to differentiate myself from everybody else is everybody asks these questions. Mm -hmm. But no one asks them so they got a little buzz on and, and come like, oh, right. fuck off and all that. And so it's like, that's kind of my shtick here. However, a couple of quick fuck questions. Me, uh, I know that you have a day job that would never imagine or wish this on you, but I would say gun to your head, answer, you know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you drive a Scion, a, a boxcar? A 2006 Scion okay. XB, a toaster. So for your DJ equipment, yes. toaster, pickup truck? Uh, toaster. Why? Because it's it covered does, it and does everything's work, right? fit, and it fits, fits in there. Man. You bought? Did you buy it for DJ? No, dude. I bought it new in 2006. <laughs> My best buddy, who's going to be on the next show, is Josh McAllen. He's, he's got, got a, a fucking weird. He's got a blue one. Too. He's got a blue one. I got a red one. He's got a blue one. I think it's a little beat up at the moment. Mine's though. quite beat up. Oh, I'm so fucking but happy that works. you would still pick the Scion. And I don't have a car payment. Uh that's all. Because I got a daughter good. that goes to college and she needs food and gas and Bro, I can't rent leave and a stuff. car. To be honest, yeah, I, 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 I can't believe you have a car. Yeah, I know how fucking expensive that shit is. All right, um, two question, two okay. more question. Favorite album, best album of all time. Favorite album would probably be one of the first two that I bought, uh, and it is the Earth well, you Wind. Can name, you can name two. That's okay. yeah, well, no, it's probably one of the first two albums that I remember buying actual full albums, and kind of the one that 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 in eighth grade went, wow. 
I this can't believe you go great. so back to eighth grade, which is real. Yeah, a lot of that was a that was a turning point like, for me. Oh, I was five. I was fourteen. No, nah, eighth then, grade, bro. Oh, 23, and I started doing this. And but you like, dude, I started and Kobe and people start with church and stuff. But you were getting like legitimate gigs in look, like eighth dude, grade. I, look, I got chill bumps. I see them, dude. I got chill bumps. I see okay. them. Like you're okay. you're a special guy. Like you're so you're so, part of you're changing the world. So eighth grade, um, that's awesome. Thanks. Thanks Thank for coming you. over, man. And I base everything on music. Everything. Yeah, everything. Eighth, eighth grade was the start of, you know, like Earth, Wind, and Fire getting really big for our generation. Was, um, was it September or? Uh, September was one of the first so September songs that I grade. remember. No, but, I'm saying. But, <laughs> but the album, 1979, Earth, Wind, and Fire, I Am was the album. So that's your favorite? That's, 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 that's your that's, favorite. Dude, I've got it on. Apple Music. Everything you got. Everything it, you own. You dude, I crank it. it my patrol car every day. <laughs> every day. Okay. So what do you think is the best album of all time? Uh, like, I mean, my, you want to get artistic and strategic about it. My opinion? Yeah. Pink Floyd, The Wall. Um, 100% Dark Side of the Moon on my okay. side. Yeah, that's a good choice. Uh, but yeah. I am not going to argue with anyone's opinion on The Wall. Right. I'm, right. I'm a huge Ze- Zeppelin fan all that. Like, Pink Floyd's... Probably in my top ten, but not my top five. Right, honestly. But I do think Dark Side of the Moon is the greatest of all. But time. you'd be really surprised if I told you what I listen to when I'm well, when again, I'm just the listening nuts. to. It. I mean, the wall oh, yeah. and a fantastic but, album, a fantastic movie. If you've never yes. seen it, that oh, shit's amazing. Yeah. But um, but but what I listen to if if I just like turn on music around the house, it's either nineties grunge. Well, this is a whole different than asking about best albums, right? Right. Right. It's either 90s grunge or 70s AM radio rock. Uh, What was that? Yeah. What was that? When, you know, Seals and Croft, when when Hall and Oates were getting big. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know, things like that. Because Daryl Hall would get big if he fucking walked walked in this door and looked at me. Because, yeah, he's he's the shit. But that is, is. that that music is my that's that's because you're a bitch girl but you <laughs> but you don't need money yeah you know um come so on you're, you're you've got smile you're kinda, for me sarah you've got you're kind of you're kind of i go all over the place man. you've also got your very manilow why not kid thing like your kind of inspiration your level but uh all right so uh Three more questions. Okay. How it works. Okay. It's two and a half. All right. You make it big. You're a dead mouse budget DJ. Yeah. Now. Like yeah. they want you all over the world. Wouldn't that be all nice? this, And yeah. they're giving you a fucking, let's just say unlimited amount of money. Right. Let's not try to budget here. Right. What's the first thing you're buying and why? Uh, Probably something better that looks nicer to haul my shit around it. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect because there was like, oh, well, and I try to tell you, you know, a house or a fucking this or not. Well, but I no, mean, big car. Like, dude, what do you, what do you get? What kind that, of, what do you get? A navigator? That Scion's not going to make it to Burning Man. Do you bro. get a fucking left. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to make it's it. It's never going to make it to Burning, to Burning Man. Hey, if uh, anyone's um, listening in California, <laughs> don't worry. Dave's not going to be there. I'm not going to make it. Also, tune out because this has been shit. I'm not going to make it um, to the Scion. No. So, the first thing is a car. Uh, a car yeah, guy? yeah, no, but no, me no, neither. But but I'm not going to get rid of the scion. The scion carries all my so stuff. So let's around, take the I'm, whole. Let's take the the DJ equipment out of it. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because now you got all the money. Someone else will all that. Yeah. Out, right. What car do you buy? Uh, I buy an F two fifty. Okay. So you're a Ford guy. Uh, no, I'm just a truck uh, guy. Ford I get out running Dale. I've it's never had Ford a truck, but I like trucks. I like the F two fifty and tiny you know. dick. Uh, Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. At least he yeah. didn't say you have 350. Or probably average dick. Or wait, he's average. Or Matt James Bennett Chrysler, if you ever see this. He's a um, Chevrolet. Uh, Bennett Chevy. I'd I got take my it. Chevy from him. I'd, and he's got a really tiny dick. Matt James, I'd <laughs> <laughs> Matt James, I'd take a truck if you could. If you can up. find one with fucking good rate. Right. God damn it. Right. Robin motherfucker over there, Matt. All right. So the last two questions. Okay. Uh, are and again take all the time you'd like, but it all as it pertains to music, yeah, and your career, okay, and your like passion that you're following and making money off of it. Mm-hmm. How cool is that to anyone in the world? In my opinion, oh, it's fantastic. Uh, before I ask those two questions, 
real quick. Okay. One more time. Where can I find you? Where can I see you? What what can I do to know about DJ Mills or go see DJ? If you DJ Day? go back on the comments there, yeah. uh, oh, you'll actually, see the yeah, let me, somebody. Let me do that real quick. Uh, Give me one second. Facebook, Bam. like Facebook dot something. There Facebook. it is right there. Facebook.com slash Music, Music Mills, Mills Entertainment. Entertainment. Okay, and that's the it. easiest way to get a hold of me. Send me a Facebook message. Uh, you can go to my personal page. You can send me a Facebook message. That's yeah. fine too. Um, if you've picked up my card anywhere, uh, you know, shoot me a text. I it's my personal phone, so you know, I'm not cool like John Dewar, and I don't have the press one for this six oh, for I John you. Dewar. I'll but, hook you up with you a know, Google Voice. Um, yeah, thanks. I will hook you up with a Google Voice. Yes, I'll so, just like uh, Sal just, the Stripper. Just you like that. Oh, you're gonna sign off this whole show with that. But oh, that's awesome. We're gonna invite you. Um, where are you playing? Okay. What are you doing? I'm at Jay's Tavern in the Sound House every Wednesday. Um, every Wednesday. Every awesome. Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Uh, the Wednesdays where they don't have bingo, I start earlier about nine on the nights they do have bingo. About drag queen or so. bingo. And it What's is that fantastic. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Uh, it's fabulous. That's definitely fabulous. <laughs> um, I'll be at Tortilla Jack's on Jekyll Island the 30th. I'll be back at Jay's the 31st. Uh, that's kind of as far as I've gotten writing things down on my calendar that I can remember. Uh, do a lot of wedding receptions. Yeah. If you need that, let me know. Um, oh, good. The DJ is one of the worst parts of my real wedding reception. I actually um, don't have a Saturday off from the first Saturday in October until December. I don't have a Saturday Jesus off. Jesus Christ, that's how fucking from good you wedding are. receptions and he's good. All that stuff. He understands what he's doing. I know that he hit his peak in twenty twenty or nineteen ninety six. Yeah, but he went he went so far down that he's I'm doing so great up. right now. Back his up. peak was ninety six, right? But it was ninety six, right? So he's reaching peak here now. You've got to check out uh, Facebook dot com slash. Music Mills Entertainment. And if you don't, that's okay. Check out MakeMotherwell.com, anchor.fm uh, slash MakeMotherwell Comedy, and all that. That shit's fun. It's fun. It's, it's fun. funny. It's um, fun. I try to tell my guests, don't worry about the live viewers because you have to, if you're scrolling through Facebook, you have to have your whole screen watching the live video. Oh, yeah. Right. And so you've got to fucking, I mean, you're masturbating in Facebook comments. You're getting a boner. Like the guy from yeah. CNN? So you have to scroll past the video. And it, so you I saw where the guy from CNN was Oh, doing I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I'll right. tell you right now, I see a porn image yeah. that triggers me. Something. Yeah. Like, hey, Ivy, I got to take a shit. Yeah. I, uh, Ivy, I got to go masturbate in the bathroom. Right. Um, that being said, yeah. back to the last two questions. <laughs> sure. As it pertains to music and your career in yes. music and what you've done in music, best piece of advice you've ever been given and if it works out, oh, it works yeah. out. Yeah. But if no, if it, it works out for the, the for the next question, it mm -hmm. works out. It's best piece of advice you could ever give to someone that's trying to do what you're doing. They're exactly the same. Perfect. They're so exactly ahead, the Dave. same. Uh, All about you. You know, I was always told by the person that was teaching me that was being my mentor, uh, you know, learning how to do this technique or mix or this or that. Mm -hmm. Um they were told when they were learning, they were told when they were learning, it goes so, so far back. Eventually it's going to be a dying art. You've got to teach other people that oh, want to wow. learn. You've wow. got to keep it going. So anytime anybody comes to me and wants any kind of help, they, you oh, know, come on. they want to learn, you know, yeah. come on, come on. Awesome. You so got to teach people. It's a dying art and we've got to learn to keep, Working hard, at least, to, like, make sure. Because, again, it's a dying art because I could play my fucking iPhones. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. But, but your I iPhone know, doesn't I have know what I've seen you, and I know when I've seen, uh, shout out DJ Sauce. He was a great, right. great right. literally my best friend growing up. The um, Wee Pub. Uh, that it, they get it, just like you get it. Like, it's, yeah, man, it's just songs. Right, yeah. But for a little bit. Right. But you, someone's. Let me ask you this before we show, uh, before we get off here. How frustrating to you is like they, there's jukeboxes now that run by apps, right? I got an app on my phone. Someone phone. plays something in Happy Hour that's like, and I'll shout out to Alan, but and I hate to use an example, it's a great <laughs> song, but it's like, glory, glory, hallelujah. It's five thirty. It's Happy right. Hour. I get that you like the song. It could be seven thirty. It's like my daddy died in a truck accident. Right. That I don't happy. want to hear. 
You're not a DJ. I know that you paid for the song, and I appreciate it. (laughs) Right. But you're fucking up the vibe of the bar. We're just talking about the goddamn Braves and how big uh, big our dicks are. Right, right. And you're playing Sarah McLaughlin fucking... Uh, what is it? NSP or not ASPCA no, commercial, yeah, 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 commercial that I can't watch anymore, and I can't even talk to my friend <laughs> about makes- the Braves anymore because that's what's going on. You know, I hate it. I, I love that a jukebox has every song in the world right now. Yeah, but I hate that anyone can get access to it did, during Abbey Hour. Did this happen last last Wednesday? As a matter of fact. <laughs> Yeah, it happens every fucking time yeah, in a bar, and I hate it. I when paid I was, the three bucks to skip this. When shit. I was setting up, I, I hate it. I think that conversation happened when I was setting I'm up. I'm not last rich, Wednesday. dude, but I'll spend that extra bucks to prove motherfuckers wrong. I love getting in there to I'll, be I'll next. Get in there. If I'm in there late, to be next. Hasn't a long time. Oh, oh yeah, no, I'll pay. To oh, like, I'll be next. I won't even pay for being late. I'll pay to like cut their fucking song off, which I think's an you, option. You play Sarah McLaughlin all you want to because you motherfucker. I've just got off work. I'm having a drink, <laughs> and you're playing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. But no, guess- motherfucker, I want to hear some goddamn chatted Gucci. But, but guess what's next if I walk in? Some in sync, baby. I don't care. I'll bye, go bye, with bye. It. I'll go with it, but don't depress me. Love, love me some boy dollar? bands, man. Love me some boy bands. <laughs> Dave Mills, Music Mills Entertainment on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Music Mills Entertainment. Come this check is us my out. guy. He's so fun. If you are local, fucking just like his Facebook page and see what's going on. Because he does a good job. My personal been Facebook page. A long time. Well, oh, don't do that. Because you do, you throw out dick pics all the time. Well, yeah. And it's not fun for me. My wife, she's ready to leave.